restaurant labyrinths around five and a half years old and we focus at the restaurant a lot in promoting and the use of produce grown and caught within Singapore itself. Something that is probably common overseas, but in an urban city like Singapore, people don't have that perception that Singapore has anything worth producing other than shopping malls and human capital. The need to go local is not just because everyone is going local. It's the understanding, firstly, of produce and cooking. What produce requires the shortest window from the farm to table to, re- to, to accentuate or to provide the optimized, highest point of flavor as well, the peak flavor as well. And with that, you need knowledge. And knowledge comes from the farmers. And knowledge comes from relationship with the farmers. Like you never share things if you don't trust each other. So for us to do it is difficult, but it's, it needs to be done because in the age of commercialization, globalization, we are seeing authentic flavors being lost because of autom- automation, high production, the need to make lots of money as well and to feed the masses and meet demand as well. So we are taking shortcuts. And for me, working with the farmers is the only way to go for labyrinth to be relevant in society. I always tell my guys in the restaurant that we are we are we have a heavy responsibility. Because not only not only are we fine dining in terms of that means the price is high, expectations are higher, but also because we are the only modern Singapore style restaurant. That's what media calls us, who also has missions who have a mission and style across the world. So we are the only one. And that means that if we we have a certain credibility and authority as well on the award scale and if we use the produce and we screw it up people will not believe in the farmers the food has history it has historical connections to the past and without it there isn't a future so as chefs why does chefs suddenly seem to be having the tools to make an impact on society not just like you see Massimo doing his repertorial system as well in in, in Italy um, and chefs going on TV, sharing and bringing up to the farm and seeing people as well and meeting great people. It's because we are very closely in touch with cultural, culture, history and community. It is a big change for sure for Asian culture and not just cuisine, the culture. Don't forget, us Asians, we are a little bit more conservative. We are not taught up to be vocal what we say. In schools, they don't appreciate us being vocal. We were like, you have to toe the line. That is our culture. That is our upbringing by our family as well. It's good that Asia is now coming out of its shell. Instead, you go on Netflix, you see like, you know, the, the Flavor Origins talking about flavors from China. It's really, really informative as well. It's only now that chefs are taking more prominent roles in the spotlight only because media plays it on us. It doesn't mean that we don't talk about it when there's no camera. Is it pressure? I don't think so. You know, what's pressurizing is dealing with service day on day in the kitchen, running a business, facing 10,000 problems. But to sit here like myself sharing what I feel about life and what I feel about my viewpoint as well, at least pressure is just what I'm just talking about. Very personal things that I believe in. And it's a double-edged sword. I mean, the media, the camera is a double-edged sword. The focus of the content and the direction can be twisted after that as well. So that's, I think the pressure falls more on the media than it falls on us chefs. Because these days, media comes to us sometimes with fixed content that they want to write and they want to fit square packs into round holes. And they'll do anything to edit what we say to make sure it fits. So pressure is on the media to be responsible and to report the truth. Question is, how truthful is the truth?